Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1.6 scale SDKFZ222 German armored car. Since the last video update, work has been done to the model's functional suspension and the suspension has been fully added and is now fully completed. Quick walk around the vehicle will show the progress that has been made to the chassis. And here goes the underbelly of the model. Similar to what was done a few years ago on my Plastic Panzer's SDKFZ 234-2 Puma, I knew offhand that I was going to need to fabricate a functional suspension. Similar to the Puma, the suspension is fully functional and is all casted out of resin. However, unlike the Puma, this model here's suspension is slightly more elaborate and is really an improved version of some of the building and fabrication techniques that I learned when I first tooled up that suspension all those years ago. First off, the main difference between the 234 Puma and the 222 is that the Puma has eight wheels as opposed to the four on the 222. Unlike the Puma that I did a few years ago, this suspension here is an actual functional suspension in that it resists the ground pressure and actually holds up the, the vehicle's weight. The Puma that I did a few years ago utilized a what's called cool, what's called a form fitting suspension in that the suspension does not necessarily flex rather it just contours the terrain of the ground this was done because unlike this vehicle which utilizes a spring and shock absorber assembly the two two or the the puma the two three four two utilizes leaf springs and unfortunately the tooling that I have was not able to make the leaf springs actually function like all vehicles, armor cars are no different in that all of the suspensions are pretty much divided into clusters. Rather it be the four clusters that you see here on the 222, or the eight clusters that would be on a Puma, or the six that would be on an M8. The cluster divides as follows. You have a swing arm assembly that is connected from the top, the bottom. You also have the spring, spring mount. On the 222 specifically the series you have a shock absorber that is in the center of each of the springs. You have the drive shaft which would be running right here towards the middle of the unit and then here you would have your wheel mounting setup and brake drums. Like what was mentioned in the earlier video the differential mounts securely to the box frame and does not pivot. Because of that, all of the swinging and suspension needs are done via the clusters. Like also that I mentioned in an earlier video, the drive shafts were made to be pivotable. This was crucial in that because of the swing arms functionality, the swing arms need to go both up and down and they need to steer. Because of that, you have to have functional U-joints, otherwise the pieces will be too rigid and will not function at all. To get an idea on how the system will pivot, here's the hub here before the installation. Now because the suspension is full functional in that it has to turn and go up and down, the U-joint here has to be fully functional. Just like in the earlier video, when I showed the differential piece here where it was spinning. To make the system work, it required an elaborate system of washers and bushings. Basically, the, this here is a cavity that you would put in the axle that would connect to the wheel. And then over here, there's a bushing that contains a fastener, which allows the U-joint to pivot. With the U-joint pivoting, the suspension can function a lot more precise. As for the cluster unit itself, it is fully functional. As you can see here, 
I could I depress onto the swing arm and it resists it and when I let go it returns back to the home state. Like I mentioned before this model does have shock absorber detailing that is on the interior portion here of the spring. If you notice the shock absorber detail is also full function. Shock absorbers themselves are mainly just for detail and do not aid in the actual resistance of the suspension. Another feature that was added is if we notice here on each of the springs we have a swivel plate. The purpose of the swivel plate is to keep the spring completely parallel with the spring mount that we have here. This is done so that no matter what angle the bottom swing arm is at, the spring will, the plate will keep the spring aligned and will always keep it parallel with the spring cluster here, no matter how much it bends and dips. Along with the detail that was added to the top portion of the swing arms, detail was also added to the bottom portion. If we notice here on the bottom of the swing arm, we have two bolted on plates. These plates here function on the model as they do on the real one in that they keep the shock absorber mounted to the swing arm. If we notice, we have some rest in detail heads as well as two brass micro fasteners. These micro fasteners actually are what keeps the plate to the swing arm, thus holding the whole assembly together. The arms themselves mount to the chassis frame here and are somewhat off-centered in that they move the mounting point that would be usually on top of the frame off the frame and you would have this and you have this really complicated looking setup that we have here. On the top it's somewhat closer to the center portion of the frame but it's still slightly off. Over here, these two braces that we have on top of the spring mounts, these here are the brackets that actually hold the top portion of the shock absorber to the spring mount itself. On the front portion here of the vehicle, keep in mind this is the underbelly, this here is the steering column. The steering column connects to this yoke over here. This yoke here breaks the mo steering movement down into two pieces. First, it connects to the two front swing arms that we have here and here. And then it breaks down further to steer and power the back. The way it powers the back is a, a long connecting rod connects to this bar here. What this bar does is it changes the motion of the steer. This is so that all wheels will turn into each other as opposed to away from each other if it was just connected directly to the other yoke. Once it enters into this bar here, it then emerges out of the bar, goes back into this rear yoke here, and the rear yoke goes ahead and divides the steering to the last two wheels. And here's the system in action. If you notice, all four wheels move in sequence. The suspension will also function with the steering, even with the, the swing arms, in the downward state like this here. Note how not only is the yoke turning the wheels, but it also turning the, the control rod that comes from the steering column.
the model steering column assembly here is another recent addition to the ECA product line and has more parts that are featured in this video update. The other parts that the steering car column comes with is what you see here along with a brass tube, the steering wheel adapter, and a rest and steering wheel. These pieces will be added once the main hull starts going up. The reason why they're not added now is because I need to have the hull up just to see if I need to modify the pitch or the angle on this mount once everything is together. As was mentioned in an earlier video, the stock 222 kit that I'm working with does not include any wheels. For this armor car, for the wheels, I decided to use the rest and upgrade set from Panzerwork.com. Panzerwork offers the 222 road wheels and he offers them in two versions. This here is the early set and he also offers a later production set. The difference between the two sets is primarily the addition here of the triangular nut guard plate which is typically found on earlier production units. Since I will be building my 222 as an early version, I went, went ahead and went with the early version set from Panzerworks. The Panzerworks tires are very nicely detailed and highly recommended. We can see it actually has the Continental Rubber T Company logo on it, as well as the other markings which would be present on the tire. The thread pattern is also very impressive and is very detailed. The tire itself is nice and thick and you won't have to worry about it deforming over time. The way the set assembles is as follows. You have the road wheel with the reverse portion of the hub molded in. You have <clears throat> the front hub face, the brake drum, note the detail on the brake drum, and then again for the early set we have the triangular cover plate. The way the set assembles is as follows. The front portion here of the hub mounts to the tire. Then the tire itself mounts to the brake drum here. And then since this is again the early one, the triangular cover plate will go on it like that. To mount the Panzerwerk wheels to the EastCoastArmory.com suspension, modifications are going to have to be made to the brake drum here. Once this here, we can see, is the stock brake drum, and in the following scene, we'll see the same exact drum with the modifications made to it. To drill out the center hole on the brake drum, I utilized the lathe for this procedure. Fortunately, the Panzerwerk component, the brake drum here, has the small hubcap here and this hubcap fits perfectly in with the small chuck that I have here on this mini lathe. For the hole itself I will be using a half an inch drill bit and I will be pretty much tunneling out a small little cavity inside the wheel. This cavity is going to be for the bushing, which will be, which will contain the retaining equipment, which in turn will hold everything to the suspension. For the actual depth of the hole that I will be boring through here, we will be going down approximately 9 sixteenths of an inch. This should give you plenty of leeway for the bushing, but will also give you enough strength so that the wheel is nice and sturdy. The reason why we are using the lathe for this procedure is because for this application this drum needs to be perfectly aligned with the suspension hub. If not, it will not sit properly on the suspension and will cause issues. The lathe is the easiest way to drill it out because unlike most wet methods, the chuck holds the piece in nice and secure and in a perfectly square format. If I turn on the machine you'll notice that the drum doesn't move at all. It's nice and centered. If you do not have a lathe and, you need to, and you're interested in performing a procedure similar to this, the same technique can also be done on a drill press. To do it on a drill press, you simply adjust the height of the bit to 9 16 of an inch, as was mentioned earlier, 
and you will then be able to drill it out. Fortunately, the Panzerwehr component has a small little divot molded in right there that will aid the drill bit when drilling it out in that fashion. And we will now bore out the brake drum. When drilling, be sure not to go in too quickly. Just simple little taps with the tailstock should be enough to gradually bore out the hole. Otherwise, you will put too much stress on the resting component and it could break while in the head, in the head chuck. And there we have it. The hole is drilled out to 9 sixteenths of an inch. Pull away the tailstock and release the part from the chuck. And there's the hole, perfectly centered and to the proper depth needed for this installation. For the model's axles, I developed a simple system that will both keep the axles onto the suspension to the wheel as well as will allow the wheel to still be able to spin freely. To do that, I custom machined the axles themselves out of quarter inch steel and I turned a small little groove into the top portion here of each of these axles for a spring washer to slip inside. The spring washer will prevent, is secured to the axle very firmly and will not come off easy which will allow the wheel to keep uh, to keep mounted to the vehicle. The way this system uh, assembles is as follows. You have the axle, we have the, the bushing, axle goes into the bushing. We then have a quarter inch washer which will then separate the wheel from the the suspension hub. This part here will be glued permanently to the suspension and then this part here will be glued to the wreath to the surrounding area of the hole that we bored out into the hubs from earlier. The piece will simply get glued inside like that and once the glue sets the wheel will permanently be mounted to the suspension. Washer and bushing fitted to the drive hub. As we can see the piece spin, spins nice and freely but is held in place and will not fall off. This is the KFZ 222 series suspension that we have mounted to this model is available on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. And that concludes this project update video for this 1 6 scale German SDKFZ 222 armored car. Stay tuned for more video updates and stop by and like us on Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1 6 scale model builds as well as 1 6 scale detail components. Thank you.